uh, as um, was covered by some of the other speakers, we are uh, here to start a dialogue between local governments and automakers to ensure success of uh, plug-in vehicles in our area. Um, uh, I would like to um, um, actually uh, um, uh, invite and get ready to uh, call up the, uh, the first panel discussion, which will be uh, covering the uh, plug-in vehicle automaker presentation. So I'd like uh, to ask uh, Bob Graham to make his way to the front, as well as our panelists from BMW, Aaron Singer, uh, representing GM, Alex Karos, representing Ford, Phil Englander, representing Nissan, Russell Varr, representing Toyota, Mary Nickerson, and representing Coda, Daryl Harrison. The uh, um, SoCal EV also plans to host uh, workshops on specific issues, such as permitting ADA, EVSC, and multiple, multiple multifamily dwellings, uh, informing your constituents. Um, please what, let one of the organizers know if uh, you would like to host one of these workshops. Again, I would like now to call up the, the panel members uh, to begin. Let's uh, welcome Bob Graham from Southern California Edison. Thanks, David. Somebody needs to come show me where the presentations are. Okay, here we go. I got it right there. That's okay. Good morning, everybody, and thank you all very much for attending. Uh, I'm going to add to three of the goals uh, for why we got together to create this program when we started out. We've noticed that we haven't had a large regional initiative, a regional effort to move forward, uh, and we want to make sure that, that we do that in the future. Uh, it's really special to see that we have cities here, we have manufacturers here, we have a lot of great diversity, a lot of interested parties. Uh, the nice part about this presentation is we're not preaching to the choir. We have individuals who are actually going to have to make something happen in, in the various cities. We have infrastructure providers who are going to have to provide those. We have installers to install those, the vehicle manufacturers to make sure they, the right vehicles here and the right people are buying the right vehicles at the right time. And, and the utilities, not only just DWP and, and, and SCE, but also other utilities are here that are important to make sure this happens across the region. I'm going to just talk very briefly about where we are because we really want the auto industry to talk about the positives that they're doing. And I've kind of talked to most of them and basically said, please tell us the positive things that are happening. Uh, but you, we all need to think a little bit about how big we are uh, and, and why we're creating this regional collaborative. The regional collaborative is, is designed to be able for us as a, as a region to apply together for state and federal funding to, so that we can make sure that this happens. So there, there actually are bills in Congress that they're discussing the possibility of creating regions around the country who will get the first funding for electric vehicles. If that were to happen, we want to be prepared to do that. We are a challenge because we cover a great area with 17 million people, 11 counties, you know, 50,000 square miles of territory. But we are, we've got some real benefits. Our energy award, energy efficiency programs, we have more alternate, uh, alternative and renewable energy than any other uh, part of the nation, so we really have some real positives to take advantage of. The second reason for working together is that we are beginning to do with, with South Coast, uh, with, with SCAG, we're beginning to do a regional plan, and we're going to ask all of you to be involved with that. Diana Gould is here somewhere, I believe, who is who is our, who's the responsible person for, for SCAG to lead this initiative. We will be reaching out to the California Energy Commission and others to help us fund that. That's a very elaborate study that says, okay, how much infrastructure do we need to have from 2014 through 2020? Where should it be located? Uh, where, what are the typical travel patterns, the commute patterns? What are the driver behaviors going to be? We're gonna pull all that data together and make some wise decisions as to what level of investment we need to have in the future. And then the final thing that the collaborative is going to be doing, which is kind of the focus of this effort, is education outreach. It's extremely important that the customers make the wise decision, that the customers choose correctly the infrastructure they need, and they choose that in it, and they understand what the rates, what the structures are, what the expenses are. So we're urging all of you to take advantage of what we're doing with the education outreach to pursue that in the future. So please feel free to contact any of the speakers talk to us at length about what we are doing to allow you to educate your constituents and your customers and take advantage 
of what we are all doing. Um, this picture is kind of get us started in terms of vehicles. I use this picture and I only make one comment with it. It's really important for you to look at the pictures and understand when you listen to the auto manufacturers that they are not building toys any longer. These are real cars for real people and the cars are available in all classes, which means it isn't just for the rich and elite, the, the, green, the green rich people that live in our community, but it's for the entire community. Therefore, this will grow and expand more rapidly than many of you might expect and you, when you listen to the autos, you'll hear the steps that they're tank, taking to make that happen. In the near term, we're really focused on customer service, working together. We communicate at SCE, and so does DWP. With each of these autos, we meet with them on a regular basis. We meet with all the infrastructure providers. There's a real team effort to try to make this happen. I don't know of any gaps in communication between the utilities and the autos and between the utilities and the infrastructure providers, which I think is a, is a real positive. And again, I will always focus on education outreach and, a, and an appropriate level of infrastructure. This slide is simply to show you that Southern California's analysis it says these vehicles are coming. This is based upon looking at data from 30 different sources, including the auto announcements, the funding of battery factories by the, by the federal government through stimulus planning, and a number of other sources, and ask the question how many vehicles are coming. It's hard to read those numbers, but the middle number would say that by by the end of 2014, we'd have approximately 100,000 vehicles in this region. By, by 2020, we'd have between 400 and 500,000 vehicles with, a, with a, a high number of a million vehicles. Just to give you some context on that, if you had 100,000 vehicles and 25,000 of them were looking for a place to plug in, so only 25% said, hey, I gotta plug in in order to get home, we need to find a place for those 25,000 to plug in by the end of 2014. Today, we have none. Okay, so we have a long way to go to get ready. We do have the previous charging infrastructure that needs to be upgraded to get to existing locations and our future panels will talk about how that is happening. But the bottom line is we have a very long way to go so we shouldn't take this challenge lightly. Um, we are working really hard on end-to-end on -end process that with the autos. The end-to-end -end process, as Judith mentioned earlier, streamlining and permitting. Well, it's not just streamlining and permitting at cities. It's also streamlining at the utilities. It's streamlining with the, with the electricians doing it differently. So the bottom line is we need to look at the entire process. So I'm going to proceed to, uh, we're going to allow each of the automakers to introduce themselves. Uh, and working down the path with Aaron first. I've asked them to kind of be brief so we can have as many questions as we possibly can. They're doing a really great job of getting ready and it's important for you to hear from them so you realize how this is really happening. So Aaron? How do I make this thing work? So uh, I'm Aaron Singer, I'm from BMW. Uh, our car is one of the ones that wasn't on uh, Bob's picture, but I'll talk about it anyway. So uh, <laughs> uh, you know, when you think of BMW, I think for a lot of people, sustainable is not a word that, that necessarily comes to mind. Um, but I think it should be. Uh, we've been voted for the last six years in a row the most sustainable auto manufacturer by the Dow Jones Sustainability Index, including cars, recycle, recyclability, uh, production patterns, use of renewables in the plants, etc. And so it's something that we as a company are very, very uh, focused on and particularly moving forward, it's an area that we will in continue to, uh, to focus on. We've worked on hydrogen vehicles, we've worked on uh, gasoline, diesel vehicles, we've worked on electric vehicles, um, and we've made a big commitment uh, to this space and expect to be, expect to see more things along this line from us in the future. Along those, along that vein, we have a roadmap uh, for e-mobility and, and premium e-vehicle services. We started with the Mini E last year. We had uh, roughly 450 cars 
deployed across Los Angeles and the New York metro area in the hands of private customers and fleets uh, to kind of get the, the big picture, how does a customer interact with an electric vehicle? What, what are the pie in the sky, you know, big picture ideas, big picture changes? The Mini E was a relatively quick to market product. Uh, it was a, a standard mini vehicle with a converted uh, powertrain motor and controller purchased from AC Propulsions uh, and, and integrated by BMW. Um, and it, it, we had very good response to it. Uh, moving forward around, say, this time next year, we'll have a car coming out. Um, I'll talk a little bit about it uh, later, but it's again a conversion, this time using internally developed motor and powertrain and, and battery. Uh, further refining those big picture ideas to start testing new business models, new customer interaction methods, uh, and all with the goal of refining for the Mega Cities vehicle, which is our full volume offering in 2013. Uh, this is a purpose-designed electric vehicle with an aluminum uh, subframe mounting the batteries and powertrain uh, and a carbon fiber, what we're calling the, the life cell, on top of it. Uh, it will be a radically different vehicle, radically different manufacturing processes, and we're expecting radically different uh, use cases and, and business models surrounding it. So a little bit of background about the Mini E. I won't spend th that, that long on it. Uh, we brought it out last year. It was a 150-kilowatt you know, motor in the, the, the system, a uh, relatively high number of small uh, lithium-ion cells, uh, sort of our first foray into uh, customer-facing lithium-ion batteries. We at BMW have been working on electric vehicles since uh, about 1970. We had a small fleet for the Munich Olympic Games, but this was our first, uh, first vehicle that we felt comfortable allowing the public to, to take home and drive. Um, and it was about 100 miles in uh, real-world conditions uh, for the range of the vehicle. We wanted to be able to capture uh, regional differences in the electric vehicle infrastructure, electric vehicle user interactions. So we had the bulk of the fleet in the United States. We had a small fleet in Great Britain. We had a small fleet in Germany. We've now expanded those. We have a small fleet in China, Japan, uh, France, uh, a slightly larger fleet in the UK, slightly, slightly larger in Germany. Um, we, working with colleagues at UC Davis, have done some, some psychographic and demographic testing of the vehicles to determine sort of what makes an EV driver tick. Um, and essentially, you know, the, the things that we've found was the range of 100 miles was, was sufficient for 95% of the driving that the customers did. Uh, most people saw variances in the range based on, on the way they drove and the temperature outside. Um, and the Mini, the Mini wasn't compatible with the prior installed infrastructure and it won't be compatible with the future infrastructure in that uh, it was sort of between the standards uh, when it came to market. But even without that, the customers were relatively happy uh, without access to public charging. However, we did find that access to public charging will, will greatly increase the overall experience, the overall accept acceptability of the vehicles, uh, and most significantly that an electric vehicle is not the end to driving fun, or rather that the electric vehicle has a lot of differences from a standard car that people celebrate, the no noise, the instant torque, uh, and the never having to go to a gas station. So around this time next year, we will have uh, the One Series coming out. Uh, it is the powertrain in that car is, is almost exactly the same as the one that will come out in the volume car. So it's a BMW designed motor and powertrain and a battery developed with uh, Bosch and Samsung. Um, it will be a liquid cooled system so you can use the grid power for preconditioning uh, to mitigate cold and hot weather range effects. Uh, and we expect to use it to test a, uh, a variety of new business models and interactions with the customers. Um, we are expanding from Los Angeles and New York to include the bulk of California metros uh, San Diego, Los Angeles, the nine county San Francisco Bay Area, uh, Sacramento. We are including the full tri-state New York metro area and expanding to Boston as well. So uh, to facilitate this, we have been reaching out to uh, our utility counterparts. We've spent a lot of time discussing with DWP and SCE, as well as other utilities uh, in these target regions. We have been partnering with local governments and home inspectors to streamline and, and uh, mitigate installation issues and uh, hope to be able to bring a, a premium customer experience uh, and in the future a more premium sort of total e-mobility experience uh, based on successful collaborations with, with 
you know, lots of different organizations within this room. So uh, with that, I'm done. Thank you.